You welcome once again to Chosen Generation TV. My name is Ikme Wosa I hold Turber. And I just want to share with you the love of Christ today. I know that you're in a place and in a season right now. But I want you to know that God loves you unconditionally. So let's say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time in your presence. And we thank you for your word. And we pray that this word will destroy you, Lord God. Father, that you will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Thank you. And as people listen today, Lord God, those who are sick, let their strength be renewed like an eagle. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so you're welcome once again. And I just want to say thank you to those of you who have been listening and thank you to those of you who have been sharing our videos. Oh my goodness. Thank you for being a partaker of the grace that we carry. Thank you for sharing this gospel, this good news with us. Because lives are being transformed. We just hear about testimonies that when we hear those testimonies, we are super excited because we know God is doing great and mighty things. And so today we shall be digging deep into the word of God today and taking a look at the, um, the scriptures in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 17. And what are we talking about? Forgiveness. Woo! That's a big one. Forgiveness. I just said that because I know it is a challenge for myself. And I know it's the same thing for you. But as a believer, we're expected to forgive. We're expected to love unconditionally. One of the things that I say is the mandate that we have in this ministry is that we teach people to let go of that heavy heart to let go of what has happened. Because God says, through the word of God in Isaiah 61, he says to us in verse three, that he has not given us the spirit of heaviness, but a garment of praise. He has given us beauty for ashes and taken away the spirit of heaviness and a garment of praise. And so today we're talking about forgiveness. And what are we saying about forgiveness? Jesus was speaking to his disciples in Luke 17, and I read from verse 3. It simply says, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you for seven times in a day, is that possible? The answer is no. Seven times a day, and seven times in a day turns to you saying i repent you must forgive hallelujah what an awesome god you know god forgives us of all of our sins it says come unto me all those who are heaven lady and i will give you rest right that is what the scripture simply says but god it says that he is ready he's merciful he's gracious he's compassionate jesus all through while he was here on earth kept on healing the sick and he would say you know your sins are being forgiven if you remember the story of the lady who had slept with the man and guess what she was not the only one who did it there were two accomplices but you know what happened because of the society that we live in the woman is the one who is bad most times right but i wanted to know it's not just the woman the men too had committed the same adultery as she did. And so when she was almost being stoned to death, Jesus said, if you are the first person that has not committed a sin, be the first person to cast a stone. Hallelujah. And what happened? Everybody simply walked away. And she looked at, he looked, he raised up his head. He was writing. What was he writing? Only God knows what he was writing, but he was writing. And by the time he raised up his head, everybody had left. And he says, go and sin no more. So I say to you as a servant of the Most High, go and sin no more. And as you sin no more, because you're not casting stones against somebody else, you need to also realize that you have to forgive. It doesn't matter what it is. Jesus was asking the disciples simply that question. He says, if somebody offends you seven times a day, can anybody offend you seven times a day? The answer is no. You cannot, in fact, most of us do not have the patience to tolerate people seven times continuously, again and again and again, that they say something to you and you don't have something to say. That is very much unlike most people. But most of us easily get offended by the things that we hear, by the things that we see. I want to share with you, when you walk in the fruit of the Spirit, 
that forgiveness is a thing that, you know, you have to be reminded. You know, yesterday somebody got on my nerves, but I just had to speak to myself. I had to say, you know what? I can't put it together. God has forgiven you. You, in fact, when Jesus was teaching the disciples in Matthew 6, what did he say? He taught them that, you know what? You have to forgive. Most of us read that prayer all the time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what do we say? Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. So we are saying, Jesus taught us, and that was a mode of prayer. That actually wasn't a prayer, but we made it a prayer anyway. But, you know, he taught us how to forgive. And so he said, as we forgive, the Heavenly Father will also forgive us. But that was before Jesus died. But when Jesus died, he gave us a new law saying that we should forgive. Irrespective of whether you have forgiven or not, God forgives you. Hello? I know that is challenging, yes. Even if you do not forgive somebody else, he has forgiven you. Because if you ask him for forgiveness personally, he will forgive you. It doesn't matter if you do not forgive your brother, but he has forgiven you. But there's something that remains when you do not forgive. You never let go. And you yourself are going to be in a place of stamping. The person you have not forgiven is held bound. And the number person that is held bound is you. Or I if we refuse to forgive. So we must forgive, no matter what it is, no matter what the person has done. Have they killed? You know, recently in the news in, here in the United States, what happened? That young man forgave the cop who killed his brother. Oh my goodness. I saw that I was brought to tears. I had to share my, some tears because why? As a minister, would I have done that? That was the first question I asked myself. I saw Christ best walking through a young man who said, asked the judge at some point and said, judge, is he okay? If I could give, you know, give her a hug. He said it the first time, the judge, I don't know whether he didn't hear, the young man repeated it a second time. And the judge said, yes. And he said on that court stand that day, if I had a choice, I haven't spoken to my family yet, but if I had a choice, I would recommend that she does not go to jail. I just want you to take a moment right now. Who has offended you? Who has done something to you that is so grievous that you have said in your mind that you do not want to forgive? But I want you to know by the grace of God that you can forgive anybody. Anybody. And so as we keep on digging deep, and so one of the things I realized when I was studying, I saw that in Mark 11, we talk about the scripture all the time. We say when we pray that we believe, you know, speak to that mountain and it will move. But on one condition, in Mark 11, verse 23 to 25 is what I'm going to read to you right now. It says, for truly I say to you, whosoever say to this mountain, be removed and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes whatever he says, whatever you say, whatever I say, it will be done for us. And so in verse 24, he says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things ye ask when you pray, believe, right? Don't we say that all the time? Just believe, just believe. Yes, we must believe. He says, believe and you will receive them. Hallelujah. But for you to receive them, there is a condition. And what is that condition? Verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive if you ought against any. It doesn't matter. Has that person molested you? Has the person stabbed you? Is he a murderer? Who is he? Is he a friend that has told a tale against you? Is he a husband or a spouse or a wife or a daughter or a child that has, you know, you know, treated you badly? I want to challenge your spiritual mind. Because you are a spirit being, you're not a human being anymore. You've become a supernatural being from the day you said, Jesus, I believe in you. And so I'm saying to you right now that you have to forgive. Hallelujah. Can you forgive on your own strength? The answer is no. But by the grace of God, you can. And so in order for you to forgive, I want us to see what Christ was also, what John was saying after Jesus had gone. In 1 John 4. 1 John 4, verse 7, 
He says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Hallelujah. Are you that person? If you don't love, if you don't forgive, you do not know God. You might be a minister right now. You might just be just a, a Christian or a somebody else who is just listening to this video by chance. But if you do not love, ha ha, you do not believe in God. And so he says to you and I, in verse 8, he says, anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Hallelujah. We preach on this platform, the love of Christ, the love of Christ. I say that one of our missions is to share the love of Jesus Christ. When you have the love of Jesus Christ, there's no one you cannot love, irrespective of your color, irrespective of your creed, irrespective of your gender, you can still smile as long as you tell them in sincerity and in love, all is good. And then he tells us in verse 9, he says, In this way, the love of God was revealed to us, that God sent his only begotten son into this world, that we might live through him. In this is love. God sent his only son. Can you put your only son? That was why when Abraham gave his only son, the Lord changed his life for good. I want you to know that same God is who you and I serve. And so he says, but that he loved us and he sent his son to attain as atoning sacrifice for your sins and my sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has seen God. I don't know if you have seen it, God, but he says no one has seen God. I know Moses is the back of God when his glory came in Exodus 33, but he says no one has seen God. At any time, if we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Hallelujah. God's love, God's love, God's love is perfected in you. God's love is perfected in me right now in the name of Jesus. And so if you have not received Jesus, I just want you to know that he loves you. I don't care what you did yesterday. If you're in the prison right now, I want you to know that you will be set free when you turn your life around and you begin to love. When you do not love, that means you have jailed yourself. Some of us are free. We don't have shackles on our feet, but we have shackles in our hearts. And that would affect you medically. I just wanted to know that God loves you. And he's saying, love your neighbor as yourself. Until we meet again, Jesus loves you. Visit our, web, our website, www.divineeaglesministry.org. Share this amazing word of God because God is love. And I pray like that young man who was able to forgive the murderer, that you also and I will be challenged in our Christian work to love and forgive all. Have a good one. Jesus loves you and so do we. Jesus is Lord. Amen.